Okay, so we're going further and uh, I would like to welcome Pietro De Vito from STEM who will tell us about the analysis of the vulnerabilities of a metro station under terrorist attacks. Pietro, welcome and uh, enjoy the session. Thank you, Diana. Thank you very much, uh, all, uh, for this uh, opportunity. Uh, I am Pietro De Vito, and uh, as said by Diana, I will talk about uh, the analysis of the vulnerabilities of a metro station under terrorist attacks. Uh, just to, to word about uh, the company that I represent today, I work for STAM. It is a small medium uh, enterprise based in, in Genoa, Italy. We work in different fields of the engineering, from the security and transport sector uh, to the sustainability and the uh, circular economy, space defense, robotics, and uh, industry 4.0. We are a very active uh, company in the European research projects. We are one of the first uh, pro uh, companies for project one in Europe. I think we are the first or the second small medium enterprise for um, project one. We are uh, very active also with our private customers and uh, we, uh, were, um, we, we are funded just uh, in um, 1997. And in the last three years, we had uh, faster growth. Indeed, uh, when I arrived in STAM uh, three years ago, we were just uh, 15 persons, and now we are uh, uh, almost uh, 40. Uh, OK, I will jump to the business challenge uh, that we addressed with uh, the activities that I will uh, talk in this presentation. And it is with the terrorist threat. Indeed, the European Commission has uh, uh, established some funding opportunities in order to address this kind of problem. Uh, since uh, in the last year in Europe, we, have, uh, uh, we had a uh, fast growth of the terrorist threats. So the European Commission has uh, established some funding opportunities, some calls, that are open to any uh, small medium enterprise or in general to any entities who want to, to try to address this kind of, uh, uh, of challenge with uh, an, a, pro, uh, a proposal, a project. STAM has coordinating a proposal named the U-Protect and uh, together with a consortium made of different kind of entities such as universities and uh, um, and uh, uh, architect uh, company, we have tried to address this specific call in order to study the protection of public space and soft target by the terrorist threats. So uh, uh, before talking about the, the activities, I want to spend some words about uh, the reason why we choose AnyLogic as a software for carrying out these, uh, these activities. We, uh, and the one uh, uh, a project uh, some years ago was named, uh, which was named the first station, in which we had to study the crowd behavior in a critical infrastructure such as metro station and railway station. So we needed a tool able to model these uh, this kind of events, and uh, any logic uh, met the requirement of uh, our technical uh, activities because uh, it allowed us to merge different simulation and modeling approaches uh, in uh, one uh, single tool. And uh, uh, about our background, as said, we had the first station that was the first project uh, in which we have used any logic for the crowd simulation. And the objective in this kind uh, of, uh, of project was to, to study heterogeneous crowd with the presence of persons with a reduced mobility in order to understand which are the uh, gaps and the, the limits of uh, the uh, metro station in order to allow uh, an easy access to the infrastructure, both in ordinary and emergency conditions. In your product, instead, uh, we addressed the, the call that I showed you before in my previous slide, and we have simulated the crowd behavior in uh, uh, ordinary scenarios, and in particular, in uh, uh, several uh, attack scenarios with different kind of agents. This slide shows you just uh, some of the environment that we have developed inside the metro, uh, inside the AnyLogic uh, 
uh, environment. In First Station, we have developed a model of a six floors uh, metro and the railway station of Madrid. In EU Protect, instead, we have developed the two tools. The first, uh, sorry, two, uh, two environment. The first is a, another metro station always based in uh, Madrid, and the second one instead is a shopping mall in Budapest. Unfortunately, today I will not be able to talk about uh, for you product for both the two environments because we have some limit with the time. So I will talk just about the metro station. Infrastation, that uh, I said is uh, the first project we won for the cloud modeling. We had also uh, developed a, a validation campaign in order to try to demonstrate the representative, uh, re representativeness of the model. We uh, have performed this validation campaign uh, following two different approach. The first one, as you can see here in the slide, uh, is based on a qualitative approach in which we have compared the different frames uh, captured by the simulation and by the security cameras present inside the metro station. If you have a look to these, uh, to these images, you can see that the behavior and the movement and how the people is spread inside the uh, inside of the building are very similar. The second approach is based instead on a quantitative uh, uh, approach that uh, compared the data of the simulation with uh, the um, an algorithm with the data uh, collected by an algorithm of people counting based on the images captured by uh, the images recorded by the uh, security cameras. As you can see here in the graphs, especially for, uh, for example on the, the, the graphs uh, on the right, the trend of the, the graph are very similar between the data recorded by the cameras and the ones recorded instead by the simulation. Actually, the ones of the simulation are a bit higher, but uh, this is due especially uh, because uh, we had a larger uh, recording time. So they have recorded more values than uh, the, the cameras. Now, talking about the activities uh, of my presentations. As said, the activities are in the framework of Europrotect and have the objective to simulate the crowd behavior in critical infrastructure and soft target uh, and to simulate the, uh, their behavior in relation to different scenario, uh, attack scenarios. The attack scenarios are very quickly described in this slide. We have simulated for the scenario, for, uh, sorry, for the metro station, the explosion of a bomb, uh, the attack with uh, a melee weapon uh, by a terrorist, and the attack with uh, a drone inside uh, the metro station. Here, instead, you can see uh, more in detail, uh, which is the environment of the simulation we have used for the metro station. We have uh, two floors metro station. We have two main entrances that are the independent uh, on the left uh, of the slide, where we can find the main services related to the metro station and to traveling. For instance, you can see uh, maybe the ATMs, uh, you can uh, have here also the uh, turnstiles, uh, but also services like uh, the coffees and the toilets. So users are free to, to move inside the uh, inside this floor, in this floor, uh, doing uh, every kind of activities that uh, they, they want to perform. These two, uh, this floor, the ground floor, is connected with uh, uh, the two main entrances to the upper floor in which the trains pass. Um, the upper floor is a, a open, uh, this is an open air metro station, differently from the most part of the metro station that usually are underground. And this peculiarity was exploited for the scenario with the drone attack, because uh, as you know, the drone flies and uh, uh, has to have, uh, uh, has to have a, a bit of space uh, for, for the movement. This is the flow chart that we have developed for simulating the crowd actions and better, the people action and people movement inside the metro station during ordinary conditions. We see, for example, blocks in which people can stop, for example, to take a coffee or to, to visit the toilets or blocks in which people stop to buy the ticket, for, for instance. 
At the same way, for people who are getting on or getting off from the trains, the people can move freely in the, in the simulation environment, uh, changing the ground uh, through uh, escalators uh, or stairs or lifts. And uh, people are free, as I said, to, to wait on the platform to take a train or to leave, uh, or to leave the station. At the same way, we have created the three different agents for the terrorist attacks. And we have exploited a double functionality of any logic. Indeed, we have created a state chart for each agent in order to simulate the different phase of the attack of the terrorist. But this is not the only option, as said, because we have implemented also a flow chart combined with the state chart in order to instead uh, uh, allowing the, uh, the agent to move inside the simulation environment. Just the bomb has not uh, a flowchart because uh, uh, it is a static agent, so it uh, was not uh, necessary. Now I show you very briefly a video of uh, the scenarios that uh, we have recorded about the model. This is the user interface of the metro station in which you can see the 2D uh, vision of what is happening inside the simulation environment. Here are an overview of the 3D uh, windows uh, that uh, will uh, uh, that record the simulations. Uh, and uh, you can see the different environments and the different agents that are moving uh, inside the metro station. Now we have the scenario number one with the terrorist attack with the, the explosive inside the metro station. We see the explosion of the bomb. We see the reaction time of people uh, due to the, to the attack. And we see the, the triggering of the evacuation. At the same way, we have the scenario number two with the terrorist that uh, kills people with the knife. Here we have a longer reaction time because the reaction to a very localized attack is not so quick like, for example, the, the first scenario. We see the movement uh, of the terrorist uh, trying to leave it in the, the station, but was stopped by the security. And here instead we have the third scenario with the drone attack. This is the smartest scenario because the drone waits for the arrival of the train in order to maximize its impact. Because when the trains arrive, uh, the people is uh, getting off and the people who wants to get on uh, is approaching the train. So we have the maximum uh, density nearby the train. The video uh, goes, uh, goes on with the, the scenario of the shopping mall, but unfortunately I cannot describe them. So I will be happy to, to share this video with you in order to, to show uh, the full video. And uh, which are the main results and the conclu conclusions of these, uh, of these activities. One of the uh, results that we always collect about these kind of activities is, are the density maps because they allow us to understand which are the critical areas, the critical points in which uh, uh, potential dangerous situations may arise. For example, critical densities are due for, uh, for uh, better architectural choices. For the scenarios, we have uh, chosen uh, to, to, to record these two specific uh, uh, values. The first one is the average uh, number of casualties and the injuries. And the second one is the average evacuation time. As you can see, the drone attack is the one with the maximum impact because, as said, it is uh, smart and exploits the maximum density nearby the, the train. Instead, for what concerns the average evacuation time, we have not so uh, differences between the three scenarios. This is, the reason uh, is uh, because uh, the, uh, the, the simulation environment based on this metro station uh, is quite uh, always similar among the three scenarios because the infrastructure, the structure, the building uh, of the metro station is very simple. We have just two main entrances. We have just two main accesses to the, to the floor with the platforms. So the evacuation is very similar in, all, in, every, uh, in every scenario. These are just some outcomes that we will exploit in you protect in order to 
continued activities because the next step of you protect is to find a new uh, solution in order to prevent or mitigate the effects and the impacts of this kind of attacks. So uh, for instance, uh, we will work uh, trying to implement in a virtual environment like uh, this one that we have developed for, uh, for the metro stations. Uh, we will uh, try to implement a new uh, solution like a smart signaling system in order to uh, improve the, 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 the evacuation time or uh, we will try to implement uh, and simulate systems that uh, are based, for instance, on artificial intelligence algorithm in order, for instance, to recognize the suspicious objects like the bomb in order to prevent uh, an attack. The future implications, both from UProtect and STAM, are, uh, of course, uh, the dissemination, the exploitation of the results uh, in order to uh, create new opportunities of collaboration, for instance, across the Europe, but also with our private customers in order to develop new models, able to uh, simulate the security in uh, every kind of uh, critical infrastructure of soft target. And uh, of course, uh, STAM is very interested in um, providing its services to, for example, uh, uh, public operators that uh, are man managing uh, uh, critical infrastructures. So uh, this uh, uh, was my presentation. I hope to have been uh, uh, quite clear uh, and uh, I leave the floor to you if there are uh, any questions. I thank you again uh, for this opportunity. Okay, thank you very much, Pietro. So we have uh, enough time, 30, 30 minutes for Q&A session. So dear participants, please feel free to ask your questions to the questions block. We will be ha happy to answer and uh, give you some more insights about the modeling. And again, while uh, we are waiting for the questions, I would like to remind you about the activity challenge, the round tables, the discussion board. So please feel free to, free, uh, to be active, to communicate with each other, discuss the latest modeling uh, insights and uh, share your ideas. So at the end of the conference, uh, the first 10 leaders will be awarded with the Analogic Cloud subscription. So good luck to everyone. And we are waiting for your questions right now. Okay, while we are waiting for the questions, I would like to uh, to tell you once again about the upcoming presentations of Analogic 8 and Analogic 9. So just in a few hours, please join us and uh, learn the latest announcement and plans for the Analogic 8 and the Analogic 9 uh, overview and roadmap by our CEO, Dr. Andrei Barshov and uh, our development team. So. Hope you enjoyed as well. And uh, the first question is appearing from Justin Lane. Hmm. Let, me, let me share it. So what kinds of AI do you think would be useful to integrate with the system you've developed, Yetra? Yeah, uh, as said, we are thinking uh, in uh, the, the project consortium uh, to try to implement inside the, uh, the environment uh, of the simulation some uh, artificial intelligence in order to um, recreate uh, the artificial intelligence algorithm uh, implemented in the recognition of uh, the images. So what we will have to, to analyze and study if it is the feasibility to implement this kind of uh, uh, algorithm in, uh, uh, in, uh, in, our two, in our models in order to make uh, uh, the representative of what a system like uh, this can, uh, can work. 
So this is one of the main aspects in which we are studying how to implement artificial intelligence algorithms. Thank you. Thank you, Justin, for your question. And thank you, Pietro, for your answer. So we have another couple of minutes to discuss something else. So please feel free to, to ask. Also, I would like to tell that uh, if you just remember something that you haven't asked during the live session, you you are also will be able to uh, contact our presenter directly through the participants' profile and uh, write the direct message and uh, communicate as well according just discussing your questions that uh, you would like to ask. Okay, uh, as long as we don't have any more questions, I would like to say thank you, Pietro, for your presentation and uh, thank you that you be, uh, you were here with us today. I would like to invite everyone to the roundtables as long as we have uh, nine more minutes before the next presentation in our track. So feel free to join roundtables and uh, communicate about AI, about simulation in academia, maybe exchange your simulation modeling experience. So thank you once again, Pietro, and uh, see you later. Thank you. See you. Yeah. See you. Bye-bye.